Actually, this symposium comes a bit too early for our results, but nevertheless, I would like to present you with some that we are already gathered. Um, um, I guess that most of you are familiar with the, with the project in Utrecht, as the last symposium was there, and you also visited uh, the park I will be talking about outside and, uh, on the excursion. So I will keep the introduction short. Um, actually, this project start, started off in 2011 with the Year of the Bats and uh, what uh, Hitti, maybe you can stand up quickly, Hitti uh, intended <laughs> to find out was uh, whether it would be possible with bat boxes to make uh, new parks with uh, younger trees available for bats to live in and uh, to find um, a replacement for suitable natural habitats within the city. Um, what we have is in uh, several parks of the city, uh, two different kinds of uh, bed boxes, uh, the flat boxes and the closed boxes, both Schwegler, uh, which we've already seen quite often today. Um, and uh, they are being monitored, the flat boxes, uh, by volunteers, usually once a month, uh, Marcel does a great job and monitors the ones in Outzölen twice a month, sometimes even more often. <laughs> and the closed boxes are usually uh, checked on once a year, twice a year. Um, then with the great effort of also volunteers and uh, Eric, who is our supervisor then. <laughs> and <laughs> um, there you can see Outzölen. In this park we have 44 boxes, uh, equally distributed 22 uh, flat ones and 22 uh, closed ones. Um, now I will go straight to the results that we have so far. Uh, we looked at the closed boxes uh, where we found that uh, they were checked in uh, September and then again in March. But in March we didn't find any uh, uh, feces, any poo or any visible sign that they were inhabited by uh, bats over winter. Uh, and that for the last two winters, which uh, indicates that uh, there are no bats in those boxes between uh, September and March, May, July. Then in July, uh, what we can see in the middle, um, that uh, they are greatly inhabited. There's like nine different boxes uh, with uh, sometimes even individuals in it that are the framed um, boxes or feces, so they are actually occupi occupied by bats. What I have to say is that in Outzölen we have uh, mainly Nyctalus noctula, more than 90%. There's uh, very few uh, Pipistrellus natusi, also Plicotus auritus and Pipistrellus. Pipistrellus I think was found once. Uh, there was also um, Miotis dasikim uh, in one box twice, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, we will see how that develops, whether they return again next year. Um, what we can also see is that there's a high activity between July and September where we did actually find individuals in it and not, and not just feces. So we know that at that time they're actually bed staying in those closed boxes. Uh, going to the flat boxes, which are monitored more often, and therefore we have a greater data set here. Uh, what we did see is that also for the flat boxes we have a very uh, low occupation or none at all in uh, winter months like uh, January and February and we have peaks in spring like uh, between March and May and then again in September, October time. And what uh, is also uh, remarkable is that the boxes in Outzölen were actually occupied very quickly after they were set up. I think it's like two months or something that they were occupied the first time. And um, this, what we've heard today, might be uh, explainable by the fact that Outzölen is like an old park with more a natural kind of forest compared to other parks that we looked at, where till today, for the last three years, there's been no occupation in any boxes. Then I want to look at uh, one very representative box because it's been very highly frequented by Nyctalus noctula and um, there we can see in the circle that there's been over 10 days uh, the same amount of uh, bats in it which 
might suggest that um, it is the same group. So that would be interesting for the future also with uh, ringing them or something uh, to find out whether it is always the same individual staying in the same boxes or moving about in the same group between the boxes. And then what we looked at was the environmental factors, whether they have any effect on the bed boxes and the, it's, uh, and the occupation. So we measured different environmental factors like the height they were hung and uh, the thickness of the trees, the exposition and so on. And what we found was in the top um, table you see the most frequented boxes and the bottom one uh, the boxes that were never inhabited that there was no remarkable difference. So uh, it, is, it doesn't have anything to do with the environmental factors. As it is closed boxes, we uh, think that it might be due to the fact that they were uh, invested with um, uh, bird nests. So uh, this year, uh, we changed the doors to like some of the bed boxes now have uh, bird proof doors. So in future we will also want to see whether that makes a difference and then those boxes are also occupied. Okay, I will skip the outlook because I'm over the time I think. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. <laughs>